Hey guys, today we're going to cover the correct way to charge lead acid batteries for your off-grid or solar battery bank. And spoiler alert, it's not exactly the way they tell you to do it online. Welcome to the channel. If you're new around here, my name is Mike. I've been a vehicle mechanic for the last 22 years, working for major brands such as BMW, Honda, Hyundai and Suzuki, as well as a number of non-franchise garages working on every make and model of vehicle running a lead acid battery on the roads today. Also, we run lead acid in our own off-grid battery bank here since 2021. So let's get straight into it. If you look online, you'll find figures quoted for bulk charging and float charging for both flooded and AGM batteries. Usually the bulk charge level for a flooded battery is 14.4 volts or for an AGM it's 14.6 and float charge levels for the flooded will be 13.5 for the AGM they'll be about 13.7. What they don't tell you is that those figures are quoted based on an out of service battery that's on charge off on a bench somewhere. Your batteries are going to be in service where they'll be running loads and receiving charge at the same time and to get the correct figures for those we need to look at the automotive and the aviation industries. Those websites also state that the charge current should be approximately 10% of the battery's total amp hour rating. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery, your charge current should be about 10 amps. Like those voltage readings that they quote, it's a bare minimum and that's what you should remember. They are bare minimums. In-service batteries will see figures that are considerably higher than that and they have to to prevent cell degradation or sulfation. Realistically, an in-service battery will see between 20 and 40 amps constant charge at a constant figure of over 14 and a half volts, definitely over 14.4, usually around 14.7 or 8 for a flooded. For an AGM, that figure could be as high as 15.1. So let's go take a look at some real world examples of both AGM and flooded, and I'll show you exactly what I mean before we come back and take a look at the off grid setup and take some readings from that. First up, let's take a look at an AGM. This battery was originally equipped in a vehicle back in 2017 when it was brand new. It failed its AUC, which is approved used car check with BMW, and as such was scrapped. However, due to long periods of correct charging, it has now been brought back to life again. And at 12.67 volts, it's almost as good as new. So let's take a look at the actual charging levels that this AGM gets when in service, and you can set your off-grid based on those. So you can see clearly there that this vehicle is charging the battery at 15.1 volts, which is within the range of an AGM, particularly when there's other loads going on inside the vehicle, such as all the onboard local area network control units and other consumers like heating, air conditioning, all the rest of that. So let's take a look now at the current level that it's sending to the battery. So you can see quite clearly there that an actual in-service current level is a lot higher than the 10 amps or the 9 amps that would be recommended for this battery as it's a 90 amp hour battery. This should also be a good guide for your off-grid or solar connected lead acid batteries. The second example then is a standard flooded lead acid which is equipped in this 2014 Subaru and it's still its original factory battery which will give you an idea how long these things can last when they're looked after properly. So let's fire it up and get some readings from it. This one is getting charged at 14.7 and a half, which again would be a standard rate for a good condition lead acid battery. And also this is 10 years old and is still in tip top condition because that charge rate has prevented any degradation or sulfation inside the cells. So again, that's another good example of what you want to set your solar lead acid setup or your off grid lead acid setup to. You can run higher voltages to prolong the life of the batteries. So you can see from those two examples the difference between what's recommended online versus the correct way to do in-service charging and you need to apply those to your lead acid battery setup as well. Based on the age of both the AGM and the flooded lead acid with one being seven years old and still going and the flooded one being 10 years old and still original factory equipment it kind of proves as well that it's absolutely the right way to do things to prolong the life of your batteries. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So now Let's take a look at our own off-grid battery bank and see what it's doing. So it's the middle of the afternoon here and our battery bank is fully charged. But if I just test some real quick, see that one's at 15.13. If I check the one beside it, it's at 15.14. 
and if I went along them all, they'd all be somewhere within that same region. The total charge rate for the entire bank then is just over 20 amps. Considering that the batteries are full, the BMS that's built into the all-in-one unit has effectively reduced the charge down to a trickle for each battery, which is exactly what you want. As the batteries approach more than 90% full, that should be reduced down to a bare minimum charge. You want a high charge early in the cycle and through the middle of the cycle, and then as they fill up, that should reduce right down to a trickle just to top them off. So guys, the final example I want to show you of the benefits of correct in-service charging versus the online rhetoric are these two big 250 amp hour batteries. These were formerly used in industrial diesel generators and we bought them second hand. Now, if you've been following us, you'll know that we recently switched from a 24 volt system up to a 48 volt. And because I only have six of these instead of eight, these two here have been out of service for over a month now. But let's have a look and check their level. So when we first got these, they were reading 12.5 volts. Now after sitting for a month, I hope you can see that, I'll just turn on the light there. That one's reading 12.75, so it's back good as new again. And the one inside here is reading 12.77. Because we've been using the correct in-service charging parameters as opposed to the online recommendations, these batteries have been completely cleaned up and are as good as new again, even though they're a couple of years old. Too often on social media, I'm seeing people ask, what is the correct way to charge their lead-acid batteries? And the overwhelming majority of responses are simply regurgitating the various website rhetorics back at them. A big red flag to watch out for is anyone recommending boost cycles. Generally speaking, boost cycles are only done to try to desulfate a damaged battery which has occurred through improper charging. Effectively, they're recommending a solution to a problem they've created for themselves. Boost cycles are not to be confused with balancing cycles. Balancing cycles are done when you've got multiple batteries connected in series as part of a battery bank. As a general guide, you want to have between 0.2 and 0.4 of a volt higher than what most websites are recommending and you want to also have 50 to 70 amps available on tap to correctly charge those batteries if they need it. The benefits of doing this is that you're prolonging the life of the battery and as you've seen from the examples I've shown you here today some of those batteries can live for 10 years or more and still be in perfect condition. Doing this also prevents plate sulfation within the batteries again prolonging the life and it also means that you'll have the batteries constantly fully charged ready for nighttime use or for use during bad weather. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Give it an old thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.